Welcome back to Gear Daddy. I'm your host, Daddy Troy. This whole week at Dad Labs, we've been talking about baby monitors. Today in particular, we're gonna talk about issues that affect privacy and interference. It's time to put your geek hat on because we're gonna talk about bandwidth behemoths and modulation mix-ups. When I tune the radio station in my car, in this case to 107.1, that 107.1 means something. So 107.1 megahertz, it stands for the frequency that that particular radio station broadcasts at. It's reserved by the FCC for radio stations, and in this town in particular, it's reserved for just one radio station. Most baby monitors use a technology that's similar to FM radio stations. It's called frequency modulation, FM. But the biggest difference here is that baby monitors, they don't have their own set of reserved frequencies. Instead, they have to share a set of frequencies with other devices. These frequency bands are called ISM, industrial, scientific, and medical, ISM bands. And they're pretty crowded with other devices, such as cordless phones, wireless routers, and even microwave ovens. So any of these might interfere with a baby monitor depending on the frequency of both the monitor as well as the device being used. So before you go out to purchase a baby monitor, check around your home and see what frequencies your wireless devices are using. Cordless phones use the frequencies 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and 5.8 gigahertz. Wireless routers use the 2.4 gigahertz band, and microwave ovens also use the 2.4 gigahertz band. Baby monitors most commonly come in the following frequencies. 49 megahertz, 900 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and 5.8 gigahertz. So if all this talk of megahertz and gigahertz has you a little confused, don't worry about it. Just go to the user manual or to the device itself and look at the numbers. This one right here has a 5.8 gigahertz, and this one right here has a 900 megahertz. The two don't match, so they're less likely to interfere. A lot of wireless devices can transmit over hundreds of feet, which means sometimes the interference that you hear on your baby monitor is coming from the neighbors next door. And this can be especially problematic if they have a baby and they're using a baby monitor that has the same frequency as your baby monitor. The way you get around this is that a lot of baby monitors have this little A, B switch on them that allows you to switch between two channels. If privacy is super important to you, realize that a lot of baby monitor manufacturers will put private or privacy on their box. And all that really means is that they have multiple channels that allows you to switch among them and have more privacy in your conversations with your baby. So far I've been talking about analog monitors, but if you're really concerned with interference and or privacy, it's best to go with a digital monitor. Now you're going to pay for this added feature, but it might be worth it to you. Digital monitors are less susceptible to interference and they make it easier for the engineer who designed it to encode the information so that they can be truly private. Now there's one type of baby monitor I haven't talked about yet, and that's one that uses the 1.9 gigahertz range of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's a band that's been recently opened up by the FCC, so it's not very crowded yet. Not a whole lot of devices have been designed to occupy it, so you don't get a whole lot of interference. And more importantly, it's also designed specifically for uh, voice communications, so you don't get a whole lot of other applications, such as the microwave oven interfering with your baby monitor. Devices that use this frequency, like this Philips model, often are labeled with the acronym DECT, which stands for Digital Enhanced Cordless Telecommunications. Don't be confused if you see DECT 6.0, the device still uses 1.9 gigahertz. Even though we say 1.9 gigahertz, this actually means between 1.92 gigahertz and 1.93 gigahertz, which gives a monitor a lot of frequencies to choose from in this range. A DECT monitor determines if a certain frequency within this range is being used, and if it is, it automatically switches to a totally new frequency, again, within that range, while at the same time encoding all of your information for privacy. There are a lot of things that I didn't go into today that can affect interference on a baby monitor, such as the type of antenna, diffraction due to wavelength, absorption, re-emission of certain materials in your home. The list goes on and on. If all this seems a little bit complicated or you just want some friendly advice, go to dadlabs.com. There's a thriving community of dads there. Most of them have already bought baby monitors, so they can give you some advice about which ones worked for them and which ones didn't. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Gear Daddy and all week long at dadlabs.com.